Hello everyone, my name is Kobe Hunter, and today we are going to talk about what so many of us dread doing, and that's networking. Whether you are a C-suite executive or a junior analyst, you are not alone in hating showing up to activities to talk to a bunch of people you don't know. According to the Harvard Business Review, many people say that networking makes them feel uncomfortable, fake, inauthentic, or even dirty. Networking can be awkward. Let's be honest, it's hard to show up on your own in a new environment and interact with people you don't know. But according to the Chicago School of Business, the reality is that people who are good at networking get more job opportunities and make more money. And that's where I come in. I wanna help you be as successful as possible as a networker and in life. So I spent hours researching what attributes the best networkers have that cause them to be so successful. My goal is to share these with you. And if you watch the video to the end, you will be able to use these attributes in your own networking. As you practice, you will feel less and less uncomfortable doing it and you might even have a fun time. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into the first attribute. Attribute number one, practice till confidence comes. Have you ever noticed that pro football players, pop stars, and business executives rarely look nervous on stage? Do you think it's because they were born that way? No, of course not. They were all insecure teenagers at one point. So then what's the difference between them being confident in front of thousands and you being nervous about talking with a couple of people at a happy hour? The difference is that those people have practiced a ton. They're just going out there and doing something that they've practiced thousands of times. Likewise, some of the following attributes will come naturally to you, but a lot of them you'll have to practice. Practicing will help you be more confident. You can practice how to respond to get to know you questions, how to introduce yourself, and how to shake hands. People who are prepared are confident, and I know you will practice until you're prepared. Attribute number two, treat all people equally and with respect. This seems kind of silly, but you'd be amazed how many people don't do this. So many people act differently based on who they are around. Great networkers ask questions and intently listen to everyone, regardless of whether they're talking with the CEO of the company, a middle manager, a secretary, or an intern. You never know who could have connections or ideas that could positively impact you or your life. Sure, the secretary you're standing behind in the food line might not have a fancy title with the authority to hire you or buy your company's product, but he or she could introduce you to someone who does. If you dismiss people as insignificant, you will miss out on opportunities. For example, when Elvis Presley was starting out, he was driving a truck for extra money. And after one of his first gigs, his manager said, quote, you ain't going nowhere, son. You ought to go back to driving a truck, end quote. I bet that manager really regretted those words only a couple years later. Another example is the film executive that wrote that Fred Astaire, quote, can't sing, can't act, balding, can dance a little, end quote. Fred eventually became one of the most iconic dancers and performers of all time. And finally, the dozens of people who doubted that this girl named Oprah Winfrey would ever become anything sure do regret their statements now. Now I hope that none of you would say things like that to someone, but my point is that you never know who could have an impact on you, your life, or the world. Thus, when networking, we need to treat everyone with respect and really listen to what they have to say. Forget your personal agenda for a moment. Your goal should be to forge connections and make friendships with people. People like you more when you are interested in them, instead of just focusing on selling them your resume. Treating people as equals goes beyond networking activities. Every day in the workplace, you are networking. The people who treat analysts with the same respect as managing directors are making an investment in those people that will pay dividends for decades. People remember the way you make them feel far more than how well you do at your job. A great way to test if you're treating people around you with as much respect as senior management is to think about how long it takes you to respond to emails from a higher up when compared to people below you or around you. If you respond in five minutes to the managing director, but it takes you a day and a half to respond to an analyst and a day to respond to a coworker, you might wanna consider adjusting your behavior a little bit. Okay, so now we know that in order to be a great networker, we need to always treat others with respect. And that's great and all, but what about some practical advice you ask? Well, here's our next key attribute. Attribute number three, dress to impress appropriately. Obviously, you don't need to wear a tuxedo or something crazy like that, but be sure to understand the dress code of the event you're going to. When in doubt, dress a little bit nicer. No one's ever gonna get mad at you for wearing a tie or a suit jacket. On top of wearing clothes appropriate to the situation, regardless of the level of formality, make sure your clothes fit well, are clean and unwrinkled. An additional trick is to wear clothing that those in the know can talk about with you. Right now, the Lululemon ABC pant is super popular amongst many business professionals. It's a mixture of looking like a traditional dress pant while also being comfortable and stretchy. This makes people love it. They aren't flashy or anything like that, but people will notice them and they can act as a great conversation starter. 
Attribute number four, stand in the right places. There are certain spots and events that are better for networking than others. Expert networkers know to not stand by the front door or the end of the food line. Instead, they stand by the drinks or stand in the area where people wait to get their food. You should avoid standing by the front of the venue because people A, need a moment to absorb the room as they come in and do not want to be accosted by someone, and B, people will usually head straight to the food or drinks as soon as they come in, so they will probably walk right past you. So instead, great networkers take advantage of these human tendencies and chat with people as they wait for food or get drinks. Standing in line is a perfect opportunity to get to know someone. You're both in line for food, so you already have that in common. Lines are also great because if the person is not someone you'd like to get to know better, after you get your food, you have a natural departure point. Attribute number five, handshakes and body language. Schools of thought differ on the best handshake, but most sources say that you should have a firm but not tight handshake. You may have heard that you should try to twist your hand to be slightly on top of the person's hand that you're shaking, but this is really not as important as maintaining eye contact and smiling. Before you let go of the handshake, be sure to ask a question and start the conversation. This helps reduce the likelihood of a post-handshake pause where you both don't know what to say. Just as important as a handshake is how you stand. People who stand slouched over with their shoulders forward with their eyes toward the ground look insecure and weak. However, if you sit or stand with your shoulders back, chin up, and eyes to others, you look confident, trustworthy, and respectable. People make snap judgments in the first couple of moments they meet you. Your body position slash posture can make a huge difference in the way people perceive you. This is an easy win we can all adopt. Attribute six, come prepared with knowledge on a wide variety of interests and magnify common traits. We all have topics that we are interested in. Maybe you like football, economics, and cars. That's great. If you meet someone at an event who likes those things, you can have a great time and really connect. But what if you meet someone who doesn't share those interests? Then you're kind of stuck, right? Well, not if you come prepared. Expanding your knowledge base can help you network. This essentially means having a basic working understanding of topics others care about. For example, you don't need to be a big basketball fan to know the basic rules and check the scores before an event. Just knowing enough about a topic so you can intelligently talk about it is a huge advantage. This means that you can make everyone feel like you share something in common with them, and eventually you can connect over other things that are less superficial. On top of being prepared to talk about more than just their core interests, great networkers magnify the common interests they have no matter how small. Maybe the only similarity you see with this person that you are talking with is that you both work for the same company. Great networkers know that they can magnify this one fact and make an engaging conversation about it. For example, you could ask what about the company made them want to work there? What parts of the job do they like and which they don't? and other questions like that. I'm gonna be posting a video about the best conversation starters ever. So if you aren't subscribed and you'd like some awesome icebreakers, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, thank you so much for subscribing. On to attribute number seven, remembering people's names better. As you eat and chat, take mental notes to better associate the person's name with their face. Remembering names is really hard, especially when you're meeting lots of people back to back to back. Oftentimes people will try to pair a memorable fact with a person's name, which can work, but that doesn't do much to actually pair their face to their name. To fix this problem, identify a physical characteristic of the person. Maybe they have super curly hair, or are super tall, or are really short, or have piercing blue eyes, or some other physical characteristic, and try to pair that with their name. For example, I could think, oh, there's super tall James over there, or oh, that's curly haired Sarah. This can help you remember their names more easily and not face that awkward moment when they remember your name, but you don't remember theirs. Everyone's favorite word is their own name, so any amount of improvement you can make here is really valuable. Attribute number eight, offer to help. Once you've learned someone's name, listened respectfully, and connected on shared interests, you'll offer to help them. People who are powerful and busy spend most of their time solving other people's problems. It's very rare that people offer to help them rather than ask for a favor. Most likely they will say that they don't need any help, but simply asking to help will make a big impact on them. And if they do actually have something that they need help on, it's a great opportunity to reconnect after the event is over. People underestimate the impact that offering to help can make. As we said in the beginning, no matter what our rank, we are valuable and bring unique perspectives and skills and relationships to every task. Don't tell yourself you can't be of help, you really can be. Attribute number nine, follow up. If you adopt all eight attributes, but you forget about attributes nine and 10, your networking effectiveness will drop significantly. After you get back from the networking event, sit down and write emails to everyone you'd like to stay in contact with and remind them who you are, what you both talked about, and fulfill your side of anything you promised to do. I recommend you write these emails as soon after the event as you can so you are less likely to forget something you talked about. But wait to send these emails till 24 to 48 hours after the event. 
These emails should avoid business fluff and be as real as possible. People can smell corporate bull from a mile away, so avoid it in your emails. At this point, you can also add them on LinkedIn, but please do not follow them on Instagram right after you meet them. That's weird. Attribute number 10, maintain the relationship. Just as any plant will die if it's not watered, every relationship will fall apart if it's not nurtured. So this step is all about slowly building on the foundation you built when you guys met in person. And here's a couple ways you can do that. You can send them an email or a LinkedIn message with an article that you saw with something that they care about. Maybe they're in the tech industry, you can send them an article about tech. You can wish them a happy birthday. Everyone loves being wished a happy birthday. You can ask them out to lunch, to get coffee, or to go get drinks. You can also invite them to appropriate out of work activities like pick up basketball games or golf. You can also send work their way if you meet someone who might need their services. This can really endear you to someone. You can do these things as frequently as multiple times a month for basketball, assuming they like basketball, of course, but try to aim for touching base once every two to four months. This way you aren't being a burden or harassing them, but you are still building that trust and rapport. Just like friendships and dating, you will click with some people and they will invite you back to other activities and others you won't click with, and that's okay. But by reaching out, you are doing your part to ensure that that relationship has the best chance of surviving. Before I wrap up, I wanna remind you guys that if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to get more videos like it and consider dropping a like, it really helps out the channel. Networking is out of a lot of our comfort zones, but by building these 10 attributes, we can become people who actually look forward to the work barbecue, happy hour, game night, or potluck. If you treat people with respect, dress to impress, have confident body language, work on finding common interests with people, offer to help others, and regularly follow up, you will be more successful in your business ventures. People who are good at networking on average get paid more, have better job opportunities, and are more likely to succeed in their field. I know you guys can do this. Let me know if any of these ideas help you out in your networking attempts. As always, I'm immensely grateful that you took the time to watch this video. I hope you're having an amazing day, and remember, you're awesome. I'll see you next time.